Hey, what's going on? So today let's talk about how Reva was basically stabbed by Anakin twice. Uh, well, Anakin once and Vader once. So in total two times, uh, she got stabbed as a youngling, survived, and then got stabbed again. <laughs> and now she's still alive and she's probably going to go find Luke now. So how is this possible? You know, Qui-Gon's in the corner probably just... <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? I don't get it. Everyone's getting stabbed or, like, cut in half. And here I am, just, like, <laughs> I got a little impalement and, like, a hit in the nose, and, you know, I'm dead now. And basically the whole fate of the galaxy has turned because of Qui-Gon's death. So, um, I'll probably be making some funny animations regarding this eventually. But for today, let's discuss how it makes sense that Reva survived both times. Now, first of all, look. Obviously, everything is in the writing. You have a writer, they write something, and they're going to try to make sense of it. And that, you know, all I'm trying to do is make sense of how that could even fit in. Obviously, it makes absolute no sense that Reva, as a youngling, would survive getting stabbed in the stomach or chest or whatever by Anakin during Order 66. There's just no possible chance. Now, many might say, well, she didn't get stabbed the first time. She was just hiding under bodies. No, she got stabbed. If you go back and look at the scene, you can see how they integrated the Order 66 scene where Anakin looks at her, looks down at her, thrusts in, then it gets the shot of her, of Reva as a kid, as a youngling, and she is basically, you know, stabbed in. You get this, the shot of Vader stabbing Reva, grown Reva. She makes the same exact face that little kid Reva made when she was stabbed, and they both have the same falling uh, scene from the point of view where they fall and things get hazy and Anakin is over them and Vader is over her So in my opinion the way that was shot and directed it 100% feels like she was stabbed as a youngling too. I don't see Anakin Not stabbing her that doesn't make any sense. You know, she was front and center right there So she obviously got stabbed and then she just hit herself underneath her friends now, the second piece of proof I have that she got stabbed is that the Grand Inquisitor walks in and he says, and I quote, Revenge does wonders for the will to live. So, two meanings, meaning his own will to live when she stabbed him in the stomach, and also her will to live when she was stabbed by Anakin as a youngling. So, essentially what I gather from this is that Reva used the dark side as a kid, and she used her need for revenge as a kid to avenge her friends who she was hiding under and everything she saw at the Jedi Temple. Now, obviously, is this realistic? Absolutely freaking not. It is just there for plot armor and plot point that she was um, basically subjected to Anakin's atrocities and she was so scarred that she spent the rest of her days trying to infiltrate the Inquisitors so that she could move up in ranks and try to defeat Vader. Now, I think this is the most, like, it makes sense, but it's also, like, as a, as it's just such a weak story point. Now, there also comes different questions, such as how did she bleed her crystal? Because we know now in Star Wars, whenever you have a lightsaber, you have to bleed your crystal red. There are no more, there are no more synthetic crystals like there were in the expanded universe and legends before Disney took over. So my thoughts on that is that she harnessed all of her rage against Anakin, against Vader to turn her crystal red. So that's the answer to that. I think this is obviously a character who is driven by hatred, driven by pain. And while she was a Jedi, it seems that Anakin's actions by slaughtering her friends and her, or attempting to, and failing, created a certain sort of anger in her, obviously, naturally, and uh, that in turn took her to the dark side. But, you know, when you're in the dark side, you still have certain um, emotions, and you still have, you know, you're, it's not like you're, you're under Order 66, where you're, like, completely changed as a person, and you just have to follow an order. You're just using a different aspect of the force, but your motives and um, your values are still the same. So at this point, she hated Obi-Wan Kenobi for failing Anakin, who in turn slaughtered her and her friends and turned into Darth Vader. So she kind of like went up the food chain a little bit. She's like, well, Anakin did this to me, so I'm going to go after, you know, his parent who like just trained him horribly and like raised him horribly kind of thing, which is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, why she didn't go a step further than that and, <laughs> like, I don't know, try to find Qui-Gon's ghost or something? I mean, hey, whatever. Maybe, maybe we're going to find out in Episode 6. But as for now, that is what essentially makes sense in my mind when it comes to Reva surviving. Now, again, I think it is 
so ridiculous. There is no way a little youngling would survive getting stabbed by Anakin's saber. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, having a hard enough time surviving as an adult as she is getting stabbed, where, like, the, the wound would be, like, let's say, what, like, that big. As a kid, that hole's gonna be, like, it's... Hey, but it's, you know, they needed to make a show and they wanted to have Reva be this character that uh, needed revenge and whatever, right? Personally, I would have chosen her to just not have been stabbed at all by Anakin and maybe just, you know having hid really well or escaped somehow and watching like from beyond a pillar and seeing Anakin just march through the temple and like doing all of these atrocities and all these horrible things to the Jedi and maybe one of the clones being like Lord Vader what about the West Wing or whatever we need to head over there and shoot put two and two together that when Vader becomes who he becomes uh, in the suit, then she's like, okay, well, I gotta rise the ranks now. Which also doesn't really make sense. It's like, what do you expect is gonna happen? You're gonna work all these years to build trust with the Inquisitors, to perform your own atrocities against the galaxy. Like, that poor woman in the village, she's like sliced off her hand. You know, uh, the Jedi herself, uh, she killed the random, what was his name? Like, Navi or something? Um, I forgot his name in the in in on Tatooine who was looking for Obi-Wan who I still don't know how the heck he found him like that doesn't does does not make any sense at all because he's nobody told anybody where Kenobi is the only person who knows is Bail Organa and Yoda um there is literally no one else that would ever be able to find him but hey whatever maybe we'll figure it out maybe they'll tell us in episode six there's just a lot of inconsistencies with the show with um previous canon and I, I understand they're rewriting the whole canon again they're, they just want to like do their own thing I get that but at the same time you can't stop but just think well this is just kind of weird like I don't know like I mean I remember you know when we were seeing the flashbacks of Order 66 from Grogu's perspective the 501st were just like they would shoot the Jedi and they would repeatedly just blast them on the ground when they were already lifeless for like minutes and then also like on Felucio during Order 66 when they were firing upon Aayla Secura. Bro, there were like 50 clones there and they were just firing upon her and she was just lifeless and it just kept going and going and going as it like pushed out, you know? So, I mean, it's such a one in a billion chance that she survived that. Um, how did she heal? You know, who healed her? I suppose we're going to get some sort of a read of a backstory now, probably. But anyways, that's how I think she survived and made it through. Obviously, anger and revenge are ways that um, she was able to survive. Now, Qui-Gon, of course, I guess he was ready to just move on, even though he felt destined to train the boy. And he felt like he needed to teach Anakin the ways of the Force, as the will of the Force made sure that he brought him, you know, brought him together. For whatever reason, I guess he couldn't hold on, and I think that's just a better story. You know, of course, we we saw that Anakin was um, trained by Obi Wan Kenobi, and Qui Gon wouldn't have made sense. So they, you know, George had to introduce Qui Gon and then leave him out of the picture eventually. But I believe that we should keep things like that of, you know, Jedi dying when they're stabbed or whatever i think that makes more sense but i think sith who are already in the dark side and know how to draw upon their anger and emotions dying doesn't really make sense because with a sith the more you draw upon your dark side and your anger and your pain the more powerful you become which in turn sustains your life so dying is kind of very difficult for a sith unless you like cut their head off entirely and it really depends on how angry they are so for me her getting stabbed and surviving yeah i get it you know the inquisitor explained that she, it was her anger and her re need for revenge that fueled her and kept her alive but also she's a youngling like she doesn't really know much about the force she doesn't really know how to use the force or like she's a youngling this is the most basic level of jedi you know that this is like you're a little kid so her being able to survive a big gut wound like that from the chosen one is just really far-fetched and in my opinion just lazy writing like just have her peeking from a wall you know being like flabbergasted or being like completely just hurt at what she's seeing but anyways that's that that's how i ex would explain that that's my theory behind it let me know what you guys think how else would you have had reva be in the show if at all um hope you have a great day thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one until then remember the force will be with you always